Well, welcome everybody to the online program of the Sunshine Coast Health Center up here in Powell River, BC. And in this program, we've been talking about mainstream treatments for addiction. And these mainstream treatments are very scientifically designed treatments and based on uh, the scientific theories of addiction. There isn't just one theory there. Uh, by my count, I think I'm up to, well, mid 40s at least. And these are all very good theories, all backed up by research. And, but they are theories of addiction and very often tripping over themselves and in conflict. But at any rate, uh, treatments are based on these theories, right? So you take this theory and then you you try to engineer it into practice. So we've talked about the treatments if you believe that addiction was a disease. Uh, we've talked about uh, treatment if you think it was uh, what's called cognitive behavioral. So there's a thinking part and a behavior part. And this time we'll talk about what the treatment is if you believe it's a, a problem of motivation. So uh, the most famous person uh, for this is probably William Miller at the University of New Mexico. And he proposed that addiction was a problem of motivation. And motivational psychology is very sophisticated stuff. It includes biological, psychological, social elements. So it's not a simple little thing. And Miller proposed that since addiction was a problem of motivation, we had to address this motivation aspect. And he created a very famous therapy known as uh, motivational enhancement therapy and various things like motivational interviewing. And this, all this motivational stuff is possibly the most famous uh, or the second most famous scientific uh, treatment for addiction, probably after the, the whole disease model uh, treatments. But it's used, uh, it's spreading like wildfire uh, right now, this idea of motivational interviewing. Uh, people are going around the United States and Canada. Has a little better reception in Canada than it does in the U.S. But uh, to promote this idea of uh, Miller's motivational uh, uh, enrollment, uh, uh, this idea of motivational interviewing. So here's basically how it works. It's set up in these various stages, but typically, uh, one of the things that Miller said was that if you tell an addict, well, look at, you're a drug addict, I'm, you know, don't you know what you're doing with your mother and your, you know, that kind of attitude, that that will create resistance in the addict and he'll start shutting down and, and making up excuses, why not? But if you go with the flow, if you listen to them and see where they're at right, and get a sense of that and then you help them to see into it. For example, you might say, uh, well, your mother... Uh, your mother told us that she thought you would go to treatment. Well, why do you suspect she, she might have said something like that? What, what is she seeing, right? Or you could say, what would you say to your mother to convince her that you really don't have a problem, right? So, so it, not, a, not so much a gentle, but uh, the therapist gets curious so that the client can actually come to terms with the reality of the situation he's in that maybe drug use is creating a problem for him or her and that maybe it's a good idea to do something about it. But anyway, these various stages in uh, motivational enhancement therapy, motivational interviewing, to help the client move through recovery. But a very positive way of looking at things. No punishing, no saying, no, don't do drugs, drugs are bad, none of that, right? It's because we don't want to create resistance. At any rate, uh, according to the research, has some very good success. And uh, as I said, one of the more famous scientific approaches to helping addicts uh, recover from addiction. At any rate, uh, that's it for uh, this program. And we'll be back uh, next time uh, with another of the mainstream treatments.